Hey everyone, I thought I'd do a video telling you about Internet Relay Chat, or IRC. Now, those of you who have been around a while would know about it, because this thing's been around since the Dead Sea was just sick. But a lot of the, especially younger people, have never heard of it. Um, what it it's basically a server that lets you send chat messages. So you have a chat room, or chat privately, uh, by connecting to some server. And that's pretty much it. It's really basic, and that's why I said it's been around forever. Um, the good thing about it is you don't have to rely on someone else's server. You can, because there's plenty out there. Um, but you can set up your own server and do it yourself. So anyway, these days there's things like, like Discord and Slack and all that sort of thing, but they're sort of proprietary and you have to use their system. IRC is a standard protocol, so there's lots of different types of servers and lots of different clients. So that's the beauty of it, and I like standards-based stuff. So anyway, I'll go through how it works and see if I can try and explain it a bit. Okay, so the concept is there's an IRC server somewhere, usually on the internet, and you would have a client uh, program for it. So IRC server, IRC client, and the client connects to the server. Now, obviously, there'll be more than one client. Other people have clients too. So they get on there, they join the server too. So let's just put three of them on here. Okay, and on that server, you have some channels that um, people chat in, like chat, chat rooms, basically. So let's say there's channels for, I don't know, there's one for VLC. There might be a channel for Wireshark. And there might even be one for Tall Paul Tech, maybe. So there's all these channels that are on there. Now, there could also be, obviously, more servers, different servers doing different things. Um, some might be on the internet, some might be private. You can set up your own server if you want. And there might be clients join onto them, which are doing totally different things. And one client could be associated with a couple of different servers if, if they've got some channels over here that they want to be part of as well. So what happens? Let's say all these clients here want to join the, um, the chat room Torpol Tech. So they send a message to the server and, and say they want to join Torpol Tech. So now, let's say this client over here, we'll give him a name. Bob, because he gets around. Bob wants to send a message to, to the room, the chat room. So he sends it up to the server, and then the server will spit it out to all the other clients that are part of that room. So that's the notion of internet relay chat. And that's pretty much what it does. So clients over here, you know, they send a message to the chat room, server sends it to everyone else so they can all see what's going on. Now what you can also do is do some comms direct from client to client, and you can also transfer some files to each other. Now to do that, the setup still has to go through the server. So before that happens, let's say Bob wants to send something to good old Alice, because she gets around too. So Bob wants to send something to Alice. First of all, has to send a message to her, which at the moment is still through the server. So it sends a message, and this time it's not to the chat room, it's just to Alice. Because you can, you can talk to Alice, you can talk to just one person uh, still going through the server, or you can just talk to the whole chat room. But if you want to send something direct without going through the server, you instigate it through the server. So you say, okay, Alice, I want to talk to you or I want to send you a file. Let's say it wants to send a file. It says, right, I want to send you a file. Do you want it? So Alice will come along and say, yes. And part of that message will be, let's say it wants to send a file. It'll have the file and also a port number. On, what, on where to connect. So let's say there's a port, I don't know, 1234, right? He wants to send a file to Alice. He says, right, I'm open on port 1234. Then Alice can now just directly connect to him on port 1234 because she was told about it here. So that initial message came through the server but gave her the details of how to connect directly to Bob. So then this port will open up and he can send the file directly to Alice and, and that's that. Now in the real world, this could be a bit of a problem because everyone's behind a firewall. He's behind a firewall, she is, so is this one here. So it's okay to make connections going out, um, but coming in's a problem. Now this one, as I said, this message was sent here, but it's from within this connection that was already made. The clients are the ones that made the connection to the server. And then, you know, the connection's open at that point. We send two-way comms. But to start one here, it's when it goes out of Alice's firewall, it can't just get into Bob's unless He's opened up this port that he plans on listening to. So there's a bit of config he could do if he wants to send files. So I'll show you this now with some packet captures and an IRC program. Okay, so I'm going to start my uh, client up here, which is just WeChat. 
and you'll see it go through stuff there. So at the moment it's uh, joining and I've got a packet capture going on here with TCP port 6667, which is the um, unencrypted IRC port and also just TCP port 1234, which is what I'm going to use for um, file transfers. So what you can see is I joined the server and you'll see if some messages happen. Um, I'll just do a test message. You'll see my message went in here. So just get into the relevant bit here. So you can see that the IRC protocol said in the channel Tall Tech, send the message, which was test message. So what I've got here is the, the server I joined was Libera and oh, WeChat's just my program. So it's like console output for that. And Torpol Tech is the channel that I'm currently in. And over here you've got the username, so that's me there and there's a couple of other guys. One of them found it from within my um, video in the background and he saw me on a different channel. And um, that's him. And another guy found it somewhere else. Oh, two others found it from the um, info on my uh, YouTube channel. So there's some hardcore IRC users that kind of found their way here before I really announced it. Okay, so this guy here has some issues with his system because I'm using IPv6 and he's using IPv4, so we can't talk to each other. But the other bloke, this CVR, he's got IPv6, so we can do a transfer. So when he comes on, I'll, um, I'll see if he's around. But what I'll do for now is I'll just demonstrate what happens when, um, when I try to send a transfer. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll go DCC send to CVR, and you can still press tab to autofill. And I've just got a file here called z.m4v and I'll just try and send that. And what you see over here in this message um, is I sent a message to him saying I'm trying to send a file. And not only that, you can see here I put the port number in it. So 1234 and my, my um, IP address so he can get to me. Now that's my real IP address, not my um, WAN side uh, because there's no port forwarding going on here. It's just my, my machine. So you have to make sure that works too if you've got IPv4 going that you're actually sending it through. Now I've opened up uh, for now port 1234 on my firewall so he'd be able to send but I've told him not to send because I'm just doing this for now. What I want to show you is what happens if I do an nmap to it. So nmap 6 local host um, port 1234. You'll see that it's open. But let me do it again immediately and you'll see that it's closed. So basically, when I instigate a, a transfer, it opens my port, but it only opens it for one single connection, which I wouldn't have captured here because it would have gone in the loopback. But um, it only it doesn't stay open. So that port 1234 is generally closed unless I'm actually um, requesting a transfer. So even though I'm transferring to him, it's him that makes the connection to me to start the whole uh, process. Okay, so let's see if he's around. See if he, uh, are you around? See what he says. So if he pops up, I'll be able to see. So you see over here, this transfer list, um, that would have died. So failed, obviously. I showed you that I purposely killed it. So I'll just uh, remove that and wait for him. Here he is. I'm out, but can accept a transfer. Okay, I'll send one. Okay, so DCC, send, uh, what's your name? CVR, Z dot. So you watch this now. I'll just go to the transfer list. And when he accepts that file, 11 meg of it, you'll see a whole bunch of stuff come up here on port 1234. All right, I forgot my file. Hang on a sec. Just got to fix up my firewall so that can actually get through. Okay, so as he said, on his end, it said it got stuck connecting. That's because I didn't have it allowed through the firewall. So I'll do it again. Okay. Now have a look, see what happens this time. All right, now it's active. You can see the transfer here, and obviously you can see in the packet captures it's there. Okay, so that's transferred. So that's how you do transfers, and that's basically the gist of the whole thing. So one thing to note about that too is that's unencrypted. Now I've just left this unencrypted to show you the, the general workings of it and the fact that it just sends these these things between you know the client and the server and there's also these periodic ping checks that it that it does so they can see if the client's still really connected or not so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change this to encrypted and just log in again okay now i'm going to connect again but i've just changed my settings to be um the to be encrypted so you can see now it's on a different port 6697 and all this stuff here is encrypted so it's all within a tls tunnel 
So I can't actually see it there. The only reason I did the unencrypted one before was to show you what's going on within that as far as the protocol goes. So I won't see much out of that though. But that being said, if I send a file again, so DCC send uh, CVR Z dot thing, right? Sending this again, you watch the traffic over here. Okay, it's just normal unencrypted stuff. Okay, so if I look at that session, follow that TCP session, whoop, over here, you can see what I just sent, which was a video. So that's just part of the video file there. There's nothing encrypted about that. So keep that in mind if you're doing a um, DCC transfer. So to join another channel, just do join um, networking is the one I usually hang out in. And you see there's a lot more people in there. And if you want to see what channels are here, just do list and you'll see there's like thousands of them. Like lots and lots and lots. So most of the open source stuff that's out there, the developers will be part of a channel in here. So you'll see a lot of stuff and it could just be anything like I've just set up my own channel. Um, and that's pretty much that. Okay, so that's just a very brief overview of IRC. Um, it could do a lot more than that with scripts and all sorts of funky things, but I just keep it basic to, to use for messages. And as you can see, um, we're using a public server there, that Libera server, but because it's a standards-based protocol, you could run up your own server. There's servers out there, like I had one called Hybrid, I think it was Hybrid IRC a few years ago. And, and same with the clients, you could, there's lots of different clients out there. Like this is WeChat, you can use HexChat or Pigeon or Merck from years ago. They're all out there. So th that's what I like about it. And the other thing, you might say, well, why not just use one of the big ones like um, Discord and, and what's the other one? Slack. Um, I don't like them because they're proprietary. Like you'd have to use their system. You'd have to make a login and I don't trust them. I don't want to deal with them. So I just use this. Now, this is a public server, you can set up your private one. And the other benefit of that is you might be in an area where you might not have connectivity to, to the internet. Like if you're in some sort of secure environment or you're on a ship with no real connection, you just want something local, um, even a big business, um, you can do it within your own building. All sorts of reasons you might want to run your own chat server. So this is a way to do it without the cloud. Although, as I said, you can use a public server. So anyway, I'm on here, as I just said, and the details are in the About section of my YouTube page there, so feel free to join. Um, you'll see me there, and we'll see what sort of conversations transpire. Anyway, that'll do for now. Till next time, take it easy.